The wireless mic comes in its own carrying kit to protect the components. Here's what's inside the case, the microphone itself and the receiver box, as well as a clip that uh, is the right diameter for holding the microphone. It screws onto the top of a mic stand, as well as the power cord. The connections are really straightforward. Power cord goes obviously into its plug. You have two options for how to connect from the receiver to the mixing board. First is a quarter inch jack. The other is an XLR jack or mic cord. Quarter inch jack or an XLR. There's nothing terribly tricky about this. This is nothing more than a microphone and then the back half is a radio transmitter which then goes over to this receiver and this receiver collects the signal and sends it to your soundboard. Best antenna configuration for the receiver is to have the antennas at 45 degrees to the floor or 90 degrees to each other. After all your connections have been made and the power is up on the transmitter, the next thing you want to do is search for a good clear channel. You do that by pressing on the search button here and it goes off and looks for the best RF channel possible. You do this operation with the microphone off. If you got multiple wireless mics, you want to power up one of them, have it go search for the best channel, and then leave this one on, and then go power up the second one so that it recognizes this one is using channel 38 and it doesn't try to use the same channel. Now that the receiver has picked the best channel, we need to synchronize the transmitter that's in the microphone. There is an IR port in the bottom of the microphone, but you have to remove the cover in order to expose it. Then the next thing you do is you turn on the microphone by holding down the button for one second. Green light comes on. And then we point the end of the microphone toward the transmitter and hit the synchronize button. And now the transmitter in the microphone is synchronized with the receiver and should work. So then the next thing you do is you replace the cover and you can test it out. I'm going to turn up the volume on the system and we have a good mic. Something you need to know about the microphone is how to turn it on and off. Uh, right now it's on. If I click it once, the light here turns yellow and it goes into a mute mode. In other words, any input into the microphone will not be transmitted to the system. If I click it one more time, the light turns green and I'm ready to transmit again. And finally, to turn the power off, I need to hold it for three seconds and the light goes off. Turn it back on again, hold it for one second, the light comes on. And finally, the batteries for the microphone are in the bottom and all you do is unscrew the bottom and flip the little gate and then you can take your AA batteries out and replace them. So all the connections have been made. The next thing to do is to test the system. The microphone's on and I'm going to, we're plugged into channel one. I'm going to slowly increase the volume to see if indeed we do have volume through this microphone. We can hear that we do. So good connections and everything is working right. One other thing I want to discuss with you is the microphone distance. This microphone and several of the microphones that we use are uh, very sensitive in terms of the distance of the microphone from your mouth. So oftentimes this microphone is used up at a podium and it is connected into a mic stand. And you can see how sensitive it is as I get close, you know, as most people who are singing, entertainers in a band, they know to put the microphone right up on their lips. But if you have it connected into a mic stand at the podium, you can see by the time I get six inches away, I can't hear myself. So that means I have to increase the gain on the system, which means I potentially have feedback. But that's what we want to do is we got to increase the gain in order to be able to get some pickup on this microphone with it this far away from my face. And again, that's not more than five or six inches. If it's a foot or so away, I'm going to start getting feedback. Hear the ringing. It's very important for it to be th pointed directly at the speaker and um, as close as possible. Try to get that microphone right up in that person's mouth, and then I can come back on the gain and not have to worry about feedback. That's all there is to the wireless microphone. Pretty straightforward and simple.